Time now for the news review of this bulletin. Hello, welcome to the news review. Iran's defense minister says that there is solid evidence of Israel's role in the November assassination of Iranian nuclear scientist Dr. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. Amir Hatami said that Israeli intelligence services have a history of direct involvement in similar assassinations in Iran. He made the comments in separate messages to counterparts in 60 countries. The Iranian defense minister called Fakhrizadeh's assassination an inhumane act. He said that Iran has the right to hold the perpetrators accountable. Hatami argued that inaction would lead to the repeat of such incidents and insecurity. He also said the global fight against terrorism requires nations to refrain from double standards. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh was killed in a terrorist attack near Tehran. Robert Fantina is an author and journalist joining us from Kitchener. We also have George Samueli, Senior Research Fellow at Global Policy Institute. Okay, Robert Fantina, first over to you. Uh, Iran says that uh, it's uh, almost certain that there's Israeli connection, Israeli uh, traces of the assassination that took place uh, on Dr. Mohsen Fakhri Zadeh. Um, Israel does have a history, even though it doesn't uh, uh, confirm nor deny that it has uh, been involved in these acts in the past. Uh, do you think that Israel uh, was responsible for this assassination? Yes, I think it's clear, at least the, uh, the evidence points that way. I think it's also interesting that Iran is taking a very deliberate looking at not simply making the accusation without 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 evidence that they are they are, are gathering. Uh, this is a uh, this is the pattern that Israel has followed in assassinating people, uh, scientists within Iran, uh, scientists and others. It is clearly a violation of international law, and uh, Mr. Hatami is is absolutely right in saying that the perpetrators, and it's probably Israel, must be held accountable. So, uh, George Samueli, what can Iran do then if it has the evidence that it needs, if it has the information that it needs against Israel, uh, and that it shows that there was Israeli involvement in this assassination? What steps can Iran take? Well, that's a very good question, uh, because the steps that Iran can take are very limited. Um, Iran is a signatory of the International Criminal Court, but Iran has never uh, ratified the, uh, the statute of the International Criminal Court. The same goes for Israel, also a signatory, but never ratified it. So the ICC route really isn't open to uh, Iran. Now, uh, Iran could apply for an Interpol arrest warrant um, if uh, it has some idea as to who had planned it, or, or you know, you know who who were the perpetrators. Um, but it's unlikely that um, Interpol would act uh, on an um, arrest warrant requested by um, Iran. So that's not really a very good um, route. Now Iran could take direct action, and uh, and maybe um, act in some. Um, a uh, violent way towards um, Israel, whether through another assassination or some kind of a, a military attack. Um, it has, uh, but that of course has repercussions because then um, Israel is likely to retaliate or the United States is likely to retaliate. So it's an unfortunate aspect of uh, international affairs that uh, you can do these obviously illegal things, um, which is assassinating scientists, assassinating military and political leaders of countries that you are not actually at war with. And you don't really have that many options uh, to retaliate without serious consequences for yourself down the road. Well, I mean, this sounds like it's a movie plot in a sense, about Robert Fantino, when you take a look at some of the uh, details that, that George Samueli has given, it's like the wild, wild west in a sense. I mean, you hear you have uh, Iran being the, you know, the one that uh, unfortunately has had this nuclear uh, scientist to have been assassinated. You have the uh, Iranian Lieutenant General Ghassan Soleimani to have been uh, uh, killed as a result of a targeted assassination. Um, and uh, what George Samueli said in terms of a reaction, where Iran 
has promised revenge for uh, Soleimani in terms of Fakhri Zadeh. Uh, there may be something in the works, we don't know. But that's exactly what needs to be prevented. Uh, and the only way to do that is to prosecute, or else you have nations deciding who their enemies are and then taking them out, political leaders, officials, etc. cetera. Uh, so some precedent has to be set here. How can that be done? I, I think the, the main course open to Iran now is uh, as far as uh, goodwill and on the international stage. Uh, these are two acts of violence that have been perpetrated against uh, Iranian officials, one a scientist and of course General Soleimani that you mentioned. Uh, and as your other commentator mentioned, a direct, a direct military hit against the uh, United States or Israel would certainly cause extreme uh, it would cause a catastrophe with, within that part of the world. But these countries must be ostracized as the rogue regimes that they are, Israel and the United States. Both of them disdain international uh, law. They have, they hold uh, human rights in contempt. They have no respect for human life at all. And that's why they are willing to do these targeted assassinations. It is uh, tragic that there isn't a vehicle within the United Nations that would be workable in this case to to bring this case to the United Nations and to have it prosecuted there. Uh, that doesn't currently exist in a real viable format at this point. But lacking that, then the other nations must be put on hold. It was said that Mr. Hatami had contacted 60 of his counterparts around the world. That's a very good thing. These other countries can perhaps take some uh, action regarding uh, trade, uh, some kind of uh, action against Israel that is not military in uh, response to this assassination. Thank you for that, Robert Fantina, author and journalist. And thank you, George Samueli, research, senior research fellow at Global Policy Institute. And that does it for our news review. Thanks for tuning in.